In this movie, you take a look at the high resolution models needed to create the column. As learned in the intro movie, these are essential to extract normal map information that you ultimately assign to the low poly model. Open the file named columnhighpoly.max. If your scene explorer is set to display objects in a hierarchy, switch to layer mode. Apart from layer 0, there's one additional layer named column. This layer has sublayers as well. Hide the column low res layer and unhide the high poly layer. Expand the high poly layer and hide the booleans layer. We'll get back to that one in a moment. Using the select tool, notice that the high res column is made of multiple objects. Most of these were created using simple shapes and the bevel profile modifier. The bevel profile modifier is easy to use and proved useful in this case for most of the column components. The decorative hat at the top is made of three parts. The spheres are simple enough, based on one edited sphere that was duplicated with the help of the symmetry modifier. The decorative loop-de-loop -loop started as a simple spline and then a sweep modifier was applied based on a custom shape. An edit poly modifier was used to add extra divisions in order to reshape these added vertices with the help of a freeform deformation modifier. After that, another edit poly modifier was used to delete the superfluous back polygons that are not visible in the scene. Finally, a symmetry modifier was used to duplicate the object to the other side. To create the centerpiece, data from this one was extracted. Basically, a border shape was extracted that was then simplified and turned into a poly object so that it can be edited as such. The geometry was simplified where possible and molded into the final shape that you see in the scene. Again, it was created on one side and then duplicated with the help of a symmetry modifier. There's another decorative piece right below this one that's worth mentioning. It is made of a ring of decorative elements
made to fit around the column with the help of a few modifiers. This piece started with an ellipse, to which was applied a sweep modifier using a custom shape. The ellipse interpolation was boosted for additional detail. A rectangular shape was also slightly extruded as it is part of the ring. The two pieces were then put together using a Boolean union operation and the top part was taken out using a slice modifier. From that point on, the resulting object was arrayed and converted to a single poly object. This in turn was molded into a ring with the help of a bend modifier and a couple of freeform deformations. Lastly, consider the high poly column and particularly the flute detail on the main shaft, but also the engraved letterings at the top. These were made using Boolean operations, and in this case, it worked pretty well. The thing about Boolean operations, though, is that they can be magic when they work, and a nightmare when they don't. They're easy to use, though. To test them out, unhide the layer named Booleans. A single capsule object is displayed, it yet needs to be arrayed around the column. In fact, make a copy of the capsule and the column shaft, so you don't have to work on the originals. To copy the capsule around the shaft, select the capsule and the rotate tool. Next, you need to use the column shaft as a center for the rotation. This is done by using the Pick option in the Coordinate Systems menu, and by choosing the Use Transform Coordinate Center option. Hold Shift and rotate around the z-axis 30 degrees left or right and choose to make 11 copies. Now you can select the shaft and invoke the Pro Boolean tool from the Create Compound Objects panel. Make sure it's set to Subtraction mode and then start picking the capsules around the shaft. If all goes well, you should have a similar object to the one in the column on the left. However, and as already mentioned, Boolean operations aren't always reliable, so you may want to consider an alternative. Because of the way normal maps work, that is, by projection, a common workflow is to use what is referred to as floater objects. Hide the high poly layer and unhide again the column low res layer. Also unhide the layer named floaters. This layer contains half capsules and beveled text that are in fact outside of the low poly column. The text read SPQR, which represented the Senate and the people of Rome back in the days. You can clearly see the offset of the floater object as you orbit around. What makes this interesting is that you can use this technique to project these floaters onto the low poly geometry. The ultimate result would work just as well. In fact, to get a feel for it, use the material editor to sample the low poly column material. Apply that same material to the floater objects and notice that from certain angles the illusion of detail is already there. So in fact, you don't always need perfectly detailed models when you can use floaters that can get the job done equally well. 
In the next movie, you experiment with various techniques to extract low-poly models from their high-poly counterparts.